You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Pastor Kathleen Panning. Kathleen Panning, who has been an ordained minister for over 35 years, brings her experience to your ministry, be it energizing your staff or working through conflicts with your faith community. So now, please welcome the host of A Flame Ministry, Pastor Kathleen Panning. Welcome. This is a Flame Ministry, and yes, I am your host, Pastor Kathleen Panning. We're coming to you live today on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. And as a reminder, this is a show about ministry for people of all faiths, whether you're a professional in ministry, member of a faith community, in some sort of leadership capacity, or not in a leadership capacity. And there are always two goals to this show. One is to dispel misconceptions between faiths and build some bridges with po- in any possible way we can. And the second, which is going to be the emphasis for today, to discuss issues of ministry common to all faiths. And if I sound a little bit strange today, it's because I've got a sinus thing going on. So uh, hopefully that won't cause any problems with the show, but just want to let you know what's going on. A couple of weeks ago, I was at a conference and in workshop and met a, met a gentleman, um, Tony Dix. He's an entrepreneur and full stack marketer. Tony is passionate about motivating, marketing, and teaching. He has worked as a full-time sales and marketing professional since 2002. Tony spent 10 years of his career at a Fortune 500 pharmaceutical company serving in various commercial roles. And that experience led him to the question that would change the trajectory of his career. And that question was, how can we leverage technology to improve, in his case, data-driven, but in other cases, decision-making, and deliver greater value for the people we serve, perhaps even greater value than a competitor. Tony's search for an answer led him to strike out on his own as an entrepreneur in 2015. And after extensive research, studying, and testing, he discovered that the answer to his question was simpler than he thought. It turned out that not only was there already an entire blueprint for how to leverage technology to improve decision making and deliver greater value for one's clients and and the people we serve, but also that businesses and a lot of other people already possess the key ingredient for that success, namely their website. Tony is now using what he's learned to build his own business. And because of his passion for teaching, he also makes a point of sharing those learnings in order to help others gain an edge on a small budget. So I have invited Tony here as my guest today to talk about how congregations of whatever faith you are can better utilize their websites for sharing their message and what a congregation might also be able to learn from those who visit their websites and how to better perhaps utilize that information. So, Tony, welcome, and thank you for being part of the show today and for agreeing to be sharing what you know with our listeners today. Good morning, Kathleen, and thank you for having me. Really excited to be here with you Um, guys today. Thank you. Uh, Tell me a little bit about how how you see and what what's going on with websites that you can help us with. 
Well, I guess more importantly than what's going on with websites is what's not going on with websites, right? What <laughs> what we know yeah. is is that <laughs> these days a lot of things are happening online. We spend a lot of time online. Um, but what happens is, I don't know whether you consider it a business or not, um, a lot of times when we want to, or when we feel like we need to buy, invest in a website, um, we get lost, right? Because we don't know how to use it. How do we get people there? What do we do with it? Is it working for me? You know, so that's the type of, uh, those are the types of questions that are being had, whether you have a business, whether you have a ministry, uh, whether you're any other type of nonprofit. Um, and the, the interesting thing is, is that uh, the main problem is when we think about a website, we think about this thing that's out there. It's technical, it's difficult and confusing, and we lose the human touch. And that is the biggest obstacle in people's way when it comes to uh, growing their audience uh, and really getting the most out of this website that they're paying for. So what's an example of losing the human touch on a website? Well, an example would be as simple as this. Um, when you go to the website, when you go to somebody's website, um, you normally see, I don't know, something, a home page, and it's got a bunch of stuff on it. But rarely does it sound the same as that person would sound if you just were speaking to them in person, right? And so, say, for example, when you're trying to get your message out, if somebody was to walk through the doors of your um, of your church, of your you might have an office or wherever it is you're having your conversations with the people you serve, uh, if they were to walk through that door, what would you say to them? Now look at your website. Does the homepage say that same mm-hmm. thing? If it doesn't, then you've lost mm-hmm. the human touch, right? So that's the kind of thing. Today, we're spending so much time online, uh, and even if you kind of think about um, a lot of the questions or a lot of the time that's spent in social media sites. Uh, the whole idea is like this idea that you're talking to a real person and you're interacting with a real person, um, which is different from when websites started off as brochures and kind of, you know, it was similar to a pamphlet that you might hand out, a flyer you might hand out on the street. Now you have so much opportunity to use it like um, a, a virtual representation of yourself or your parish, if you will, or, or, or whatever you choose to call it. Yeah, I, you know, that's really interesting because what you just said brings to my mind, I've, I've got a website, and based on what you've just told, just shared, it needs work. Um, and because when I started working with that, the people I was working with were telling me, you know, you got to do it this way and you got to have all of these uh, long conversation and uh, homepage and things like that. And it's more like a brochure. Um, and right. a lot of the websites I see um, tend to be that or, you know, it's like um, a brochure you'd hand out about your church, all the different things you do and all of this kind of thing. And um, what you're saying is that websites have evolved and what their their best use for them has evolved as well. Is that what you're Absolutely. telling me? Absolutely. And, I, and, and Kathleen, I learned this stuff the hard way, right? I, I, I left um, uh, my corporate gig going off to start my own business. And uh, like many entrepreneurs out there or people running any type of organization, right? I, I needed to get a website. I felt like I needed to get a website, but my mindset was I'm getting this website. So it is, so I'm really in business. People can be confident that I'm actually in business, right? And sometimes the problem starts there is that you don't really know why you're getting a website other than I need people to know I'm out here. And I need people to, if they check and see, is this guy a real business that he's really in business? So that's what you build it for. So you're going in kind of with a brochure mindset um, where you have an opportunity to do a lot more with your website and really get a value out of it that you should so that you feel like it's working for you is to think more of it like an employee in your business or even think about it as another room in your business or in your building or your home or wherever it is that you do business, right? 
The difference between this and something else is that it works 24 seven, right? So the deal is, is okay. If I normally have service, for example, here in my church, uh, can I not reach more people if I put some of those services up online on my website? Mm -hmm. The answer would be absolutely. I could, right? How about if I had, um, if I'm recording my services and I made replays available online, couldn't I put that on, I would put that on my website. Um, yeah. Uh, pause, we're going to have to take a, a break. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We got to take a break here for a uh, few, few words from other people. So uh, please stay tuned. This is the BBM global network and tune in radio and you're listening to a flame ministry. We'll be right back. Dr. Rob Moyer is the director of the Ocean River Institute, and he is passionate about saving the ocean by helping dolphins suffering from nitrogen pollution. Nitrogen is a dangerous pollutant, affecting our oceans, altering ocean ecosystems, and contributing to global warming. The Ocean River Institute provides opportunities to make a difference and encourages people to go the distance for savvy stewardship of a greater and bluer planet Earth. Partnered with organizations from Massachusetts to Florida, Alaska to the Caribbean, the Ocean River Institute's mission is to foster involvement in conservation and environmental monitoring by facilitating grassroots efforts at local and regional levels. Hello, I'm Rob Moyer of the Ocean River Institute. Please visit our website at oceanriver.org. Sign up for free e-alerts. You may call us at 617-661-6647. Our email address is info at Ocean River. Become informed and then act with us. Thank you. America is out of control. Today's capitalism and the approach to money is in fact a symptom of a more widespread pattern of excessive behavior. In his book, The Culture of Excess, How America Lost Self-Control and Why We Need to Redefine Success, clinical psychologist Dr. Jay Slosar portrays an America where excess fuels the drive to succeed. Dr. Slosar examines the cultural factors that lead to excess ranging from obesity to fraud to pervasive budget deficits. His book examines the powerful economic and social factors and their impact on our psychological well-being. Dr. Slosar explores the psychological impact of increasing narcissism, perfectionism, self-destruction, and our identity confusion. He offers recommendations for helping Generation Me become Generation We. Those who resist Slosar's message will want to avoid his discussion of regulation and his recent message that at this point, democracy must be more important than today's capitalism. Get his book now online or by visiting thecultureofexcess.com. Welcome back. This is A Flame Ministry here on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I am your host, Pastor Kathleen Panning, and my guest today is Tony Dix. And Tony is passionate about helping other people learn to use their website to um, be a great tool for decision making and getting the word out about in his case, or business, but in our case today, for our congregations. So, Tony, before the break, you were talking about some of the things that would be good to put up on a website, like maybe broadcasting services or um, a replaying a, a sermon or a message that somebody uh, delivers on a, during a service. What else can you think, can you right. share with us that are good things? Right. And uh, so when you think about uh, your um, website as an employee, then you also think about it as um, uh, marketing new opportunities. So normally when events are marketed, you're normally saying, hey, let me create a list that's going to be our schedule of events for the month, the week, the whatever. Um, However, when you start using your website as an employee, then you can start doing things specifically like, hey, let me have you sign up for our event today. Give me your email address here to join our list for this event that we're promoting. Because the deal is this, is that you, when you just Mm -hmm. make an announcement on your website, you have no clue as to which people are, are actually responding, reacting, or behaving in a certain way relative to that announcement you're putting out. When, if you were, if you were there in person, you probably would have people sign up. We do that all the time, right? So if you use your Mm -hmm. website to get signups for your event, 
you achieve two things. So when we talk about decision making, we're all making decisions, and this is very, very pertinent even when you're building a faith-based community, right? You want to know, what are people signing up for and what are they not signing up for? How many people received this announcement? How many people saw it? On your website, you can see how many people visited the page. Oh, a thousand people visited the page. How many people actually signed up or RSVP'd for the event? Oh, a hundred people. All right, well, that's 10%. Is that good or bad? You'll know with time or you can decide, right? Then you mm-hmm. see how many people actually showed up for the event. Maybe less than a hundred showed up. Maybe more than a hundred showed up. We don't know the answer, but we do know that having the information helps us understand a lot about what our audience, what our um, congregation is responding positively to or negatively to. And the main value of that is so that we can do more of the things that are really working. Um, uh, One of the big watchouts is uh, our own kind of the curse of knowledge. We talk to people all the time and we can easily make decisions after having talked to like, you know, two or three people all of a sudden we're like, Oh yeah, this is what everybody's thinking. But it's really helpful to have um, something that's not based on what you're personally hearing or hear uh, hearing from people to also back up what your assumptions are to make better. And that helps you make better decisions for your congregation. Yeah. So uh, I'm, my wheels are turning as you're talking here. So if somebody is offering, uh, say, a, a program for for children, and they're getting a bunch of people signing up on the website, now you know they can know who's who are the regular people, who are the the members that they would expect. But this is also a way of helping a congregation know, okay, who's somebody in the community who, um, you know, maybe this is the first time we have any contact with them and they're signing up. And it could be a great way to um, kind of build a uh, an awareness of what people in the community might be looking for or what's not resonating with them at all. And it, uh, that's kind of what I'm hearing. Yeah. What I'm hearing you say from that. And that's really good information because many congregations just go by the assumption of, Oh, this is what we need to do. Really? Is this what, you know, maybe it's good for your members, but What about if you want to reach out beyond that? Is it going to resonate with people beyond that? Yeah. Exactly. Um, Exactly. And even, yeah, and even is it what really most of the members want? Because it may not be. Um, So, yeah, Mm -hmm. that's a great way to, to help making some of those decisions. Any other tips and tricks that you can share with us about... Uh, things that might be good to put up there on that website. Well, absolutely. So uh, let me let me preface this with one thing for sure. So building off of what you just said, one of the main things that you need to be thinking about when you just, when you're trying to figure out if your website is working as hard as it can for you is how long your email list is growing. And these are opt-in emails. This means, am I getting new people, new email addresses, new contact information for new people through my website? The reason for that is twofold. One, um, your website's acting as an employee for you, collecting those rather than you having sign-ins or the little cards fill in at at your pew or something like that, and then you turn it in. What happens is those have to be collected. Then somebody has to sit down and enter all the data and all that great stuff. And there's a lot of opportunities Mm -hmm. for error to happen there, as well as like not being able to read someone's handwriting, whatever. Right. However, when you (laughs) use your website, Hey, go over here and put in the website, you get the email. It's already done. No, it's, it's done in less than half the time. Right. Um, So you're getting that information and that email list is growing. So a lot of what I'll suggest or what I'm going to go into suggesting right now are more things that people would want to give you their email address for, whether they are in your congregation now or in the community, someone who may become a a member of your congregation later. Um, And these are called lead magnets. How are we looking on time? Uh Do I have a second? Yeah, yeah, you got keep going. 
Okay, great. These are called lead magnets. And so when we were in the commercial break, I heard um, a commercial where someone said, hey, go to this website to get updates. Well, guys, nobody wants updates in general. Updates about what, right? And so you typically have, um, it, it, okay, and spiritual communities tend to be a lot of cool tools and resources and programs that you all are doing that if you make them available, hey, it's a checklist for this. Hey, here's a quick guide about that. Um, those are things that you can make available on the website in exchange for email address. Uh, uh, that's great information. we got to stop. We can do more on this after we come back from another break. This is the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. We'll be right back. Psychologist, master certified coach, and CEO of the executive and organizational development firm True North Leadership, Dr. Relly Nadler brings his expertise in emotional intelligence to keynotes, consulting, coaching, and training. He is the author of Leader's Playbook and Leading with Emotional Intelligence that lays out tips and tools for effective leadership. Dr. Nadler has designed multi day executive boot camps for high achievers in Fortune 500 companies and has coached CEOs, presidents and their staff and developed and delivered innovative leadership programs for such organizations as Anheuser-Busch, BMW, MCI, EDS, DreamWorks Animation, the U.S. Navy and Vanguard Health Systems. To learn more and get your free iPhone app highlighting his tools with videos, leadership keys, visit www.truenorthleadership.com today. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkalife, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. We are back here on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. And my guest today here on the Flame Ministry is Mr. Tony Dix. And we're talking about using the congregation's website to um, be a really good tool for getting your word out, getting the message out. And before the break, Tony, you were talking about um, building an email list through using something called a lead magnet. And give us a, a kind of a short definition of what what is a lead magnet? What kind of things constitute a good lead magnet? Right, yeah. So a lead magnet is anything that you're going to give away for free that's going to create value for your congregation. Um, that would be, so let's say, for example, let's take the physical environment, right? And just say, Hey, we're going to replicate that online. So one thing that sometimes churches will give out or spiritual communities will give out is uh, a Bible, uh, hmm. maybe the, the, a, a small version of one, right? There might be just the new Testament or something like that. Right. But they might give one of mm-hmm. those out so someone can get one of those uh, for free. They can sign up for their free Bible online, right? Um, and that's a way that you're getting information. Your your job is to build that list so that you can reach out and communicate and, and impact more people with your message, right? Oh, and by the way, let's not forget that the website also does not limit you to your local community because you may find – more things that people want in your local community, or you may also choose to uh, touch more people that live in other places with your message that are looking for the message and the things that you provide the way you give it, right? So anyway, uh, um, a Bible. Yeah, I, that, oh, go ahead. Yeah, 
That's one. Uh, the other thing I was just thinking of is you mentioned that is, you know, most faiths have some special holidays um, and uh, within the Christian mm-hmm. church and with uh, we're coming up to Christmas and Jewish people coming up towards Hanukkah. And so um, I know within many Christian communities, the four Sundays that precede Christmas are called the season of Advent, and some people create a devotional book uh, that can be used uh, to help people get ready for Christmas during this season of Advent, and that would be a wonderful tool uh, to give away for free as a good lead magnet type of thing. So um, uh, that's one thing I can think of. Uh, you know, um, uh, you mentioned yeah, before like, the break some things like a checklist. Um, you know, uh, if a congregation is doing something about parenting, um, maybe you could create uh, a little booklet or a checklist to help with um, some tips on parenting uh, or um, for uh, creating a better marriage or, you know, some things like that uh, could be Absolutely. utilized uh, as a uh, lead. And, as a matter of fact, and as a matter of fact, uh, Kathleen, anything that is spoken about in a sermon, for example, or in any of the messages, right? There's normally, there's, mm-hmm. you can have these cliff notes that are coming out of those. What are the main takeaways from this thing and this thing and that, uh, you know, from this service, from that service, from this service? And by the time you can give those out individually, because they're normally something that a person can use in their life somewhere to solve some problem for them, right? Um, you mm-hmm. can give them out individually. By the time you do several of those individually, you can put them into, you can start grouping them into small packs. One you might give away for free, one you might give away for a donation, right? And so mm-hmm. now you're starting to um, bring more money in that you can use to do more things for your congregation, right? So these are, so the first is the lead magnet where you're giving away for free. And all of this content that you're creating to serve your audience can be reformatted in the format of video, written, um, audio, and put in these little bundles and either given away for free or for uh, a a donation that helps you to build your congregation. And you can make all that live on your website. Yeah, those are all really great ideas uh, and things that you know, one of the things I, I learned recently is that most Christian congregations have an attendance of less than 100 people. So what you're talking about are not things that are going to take uh, a huge budget to accomplish, exactly. uh, you know, uh, as a as a pastor, I could do, you know, put together a devotional book. Um, yes, yeah, so it takes some time, but you know, I could do that, and um, you can store it online and and get it out online. It doesn't even have to be printed; it can be a, a PDF that people can print or just read online on their own. Um, so exactly, you know, there's exactly, uh, yeah. Um, so and any one more other thing ways worth that mentioning, you... Kathleen? One more thing oh, probably good. worth mentioning because you know you and I met, met at Ask Live and that's uh, met by Ryan Levesque, right? And one of the things mm-hmm. he uh, he he champions a lot is the use of quizzes and the exercise of asking your audience what they want, right? So mm-hmm. uh, right. I'll put it two ways. The first thing I'll put I'll put in first position asking your audience what they want. If you want more ideas of what types of things you can create and provide through your website for your audience and for other people that would get the benefit from your, uh, that your congregation is looking for, then ask them, what else do you want from us? What else do you want from us? Right. (laughs) What kind of challenges are you having in this aspect of your life or that aspect of your life? And then come together, create something for that and make it available in multiple formats. And just remember, anytime you're recording video, writing something, creating a pamphlet or anything like that, it's all, all you have to do is just put it, make, now make it available on your website. You don't have to change yeah. anything about what you're doing. We're just saying, since you're already going to make it available, now put it up on your website as well, right? And make it easy to get to. Um, the second part uh, is... Uh, surveys or quizzes, right? So there, you can use mm-hmm. quizzes also as a lead magnet tool. 
And because it gets so deep, we can go into a whole other thing about that. But the great thing is, Kathleen, they've got you right there to be able to tell them a little bit more even about what you've learned about kind of using these kinds of tools to engage people that can benefit from the value you create. Um, so that's another, that's another great approach. Those two things are another great two um, steps people can take. Well, yeah, and what you mentioned about the quizzes, I mean, you could just do um, uh, quizzes about Scripture, uh, whatever your community's Scripture is, uh, quizzes about um, the history of your congregation, quizzes. Of, you could make it really fun. You could make them uh, for different age groups, uh, like for children, have a children's page with all kinds of little quizzes for them. You, we could do a lot of different things with that. But we got to take another break here. So this is the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Stay tuned. We're going to come right back. Renaissance woman, trailblazer, maverick. Those are just some of the words to describe to Chandra Poulard, owner and CEO of House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC, a woman minority veteran owned entertainment company based in Washington, D.C. Ms. Poulard served 10 years honorably in the United States Navy and departed from active duty to pursue her dreams of becoming an entertainment mogul. House of Virgo Entertainment offers script writing, producing, directing, DJ services, editing, and more. They cater to businesses, corporations, college students, working professionals, aspiring artists, and nonprofit organizations, and employ veterans of the armed forces. Tashandra Poulard is pioneering the way we view media and taking her brand global. Visit her at www.houseofvirgoentertainment.com or call 281-515-3740 and like her on Facebook at House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC. Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment?, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various business interest through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg01 at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. We are back here on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio, and I am your host, Pastor Kathleen Panning. My guest today is Tony Dix, and we're talking about congregation websites, of all things, um, and how to use them more effectively like they may be an employee or an extension of the, really not as a brochure, but as the ongoing active ministry of your congregation. And before the break, Tony, you were talking about um, some of the things we can offer on a website and some of the things we can do with a, a congregation's website. And one of the concerns that um, might come up for people is that uh, well, this all sounds great, but in you know a lot of places, the people who are doing the website in a congregation, especially if it's a small congregation, might be people who are just volunteering and who are kind of like me, do it yourselfers. And so, how, what kind of technical knowledge and stuff? How hard is this stuff? In other words. To put it bluntly. Yeah, so yeah, so it's actually gotten a lot easier. So I fall in the same category. I still build my own stuff and actually I'll give you a little story. I I, I was having frustration with web developers uh building the website building my websites the way I wanted them to build them. Uh and I was experimenting with different things and I was just getting so frustrated that I would normally end up trying to start doing things myself, right? So I started messing around with mm -hmm. WordPress and that wasn't as easy as it seemed to be. I started messing around with HubSpot. 
that wasn't as easy as it seemed to be. I would mess around with some landing page softwares. Um, there are a lot of things out there. The thing I, I use is uh, ClickFunnels. And ClickFunnels makes it pretty easy because it's drag and drop. Um, everything that you need to do is there from doing webinars to doing email blast to all of that stuff all in one software and pretty much there and they're all templates in there. So it makes it so that pretty much anybody can do it. It's totally made for people like myself and most people out there who don't know how to code, don't know how to do web design, don't know how to do any of that. So, um, and besides that, there are other platforms out there that, that might be helpful. Uh, so the deal would be is to, I would say, use platforms. I don't, Wix, Squarespace, any of those platforms to build on because it's easier and it's a little bit, uh, it doesn't require so much coding skill. Um, and then um, also don't hesitate to use services like Fiverr, um, uh, Up, Upwork. Upwork is another one. Um, there are a few services out there where you can get freelancers that will build stuff for you on a project basis, which really helps you to control costs. As much as possible, try not to deal with hourly fees. Um, but the technical stuff is really only 20% of the whole thing. The biggest, the most important part of making your website work really has a lot more to do with uh, being very specific about who you're talking to, very specific about what you're offering, and telling the right stories around it which is part and parcel to every spiritual ministry that I've come into contact with. Some of the best storytelling happens <laughs> in the faith community, right? Um, mm -hmm. So yeah. that's the good thing. Everything else is about how to direct somebody that's going to do the work for you. So um, I'll talk a little bit about that, actually, about five key pieces of information that you need to make sure you have on hand to give to whoever's doing the work for you, whether they be inside your congregation or not. Um, and that is probably going to be much more important than actually getting the work done, because if you can give them the right inputs, then it's going to be a lot less expensive and you're going to get a lot more value out of your website. Are we ready to that, go into that's that? That's great. You know? Yeah, um, yeah. What are those keys? I, we need to know so that we can unlock that All right. door. All right, great. Well, the first one is your general business information, um, and um, I'll preface this by saying. Um, I started working on my own website so much that all of a sudden, instead of the business I had initially uh, ventured out on, I ended up going into the business of um, being an agency, a marketing agency for, for businesses for a, for a time period. And I worked with an agency uh, very closely called Diz and Cooper Advertising, and there we did a lot of websites for people, right? And so, at, mm -hmm. um, so I, ended up, I ended up doing a lot of website work, even as not being a web developer. And so one of the main things people would come in with, um, we would find is that, um, they had incomplete business information uh, because Google likes to see your business information in a certain way. So uh, the things you need to think about there is you need, to, you need to write out what are your hours of operation, oftentimes missed. What are your hours of operation? Where is your address? <laughs> what is the name of your place? Um, and you need to also include a short description that's less than 160 characters uh, about, you know, what the mission of your faith-based ministry is about, right? So you don't wow. want to have a generic something that says, hey, we're this and that and the third, and it's just going running long and forever, and you don't get to get the main thing you want somebody to see. If, they, if you came up mm -hmm. in Google results, you, you don't want them to miss the main thing that makes you different, makes you unique, or that really – uh, communicates what your mission is in your ministry, because it may be different from a similar denomination church right down the road. Right. Yeah. So you want to make sure that's in there with less than 160 characters as well. So that you can hand that off and that information goes into Google, my business. That's how you show up on those maps, guys, Google, my business and directly into your website. Wow. So that's that's going to be a, 
Yeah, that's going to be a challenge for many people to 150 characters or less. We have to take another break, and we'll be back. This is BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. We are coming back. All right. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapoulis drives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. We are back here on the BBM Global Network. This is a flame ministry. I am your host, Pastor Kathleen Panning, and my guest is Tony Dix, and we're talking about congregation websites and maximizing them as a good tool for um, decision making and getting the word out. And before the break, Tony, you were talking about uh, five keys that people need to be able to give to anybody, whether it's a member of your congregation, uh, whoever's working on the website. And uh, you gave us the first one, so um, which is uh, the basic information about your congregation. Uh, so keep going. What are the other four? Yeah. Um, okay. So that's to tell you about the business. So, you know, there's different pieces there. One more thing I might want to call out there is make sure you actually have a business email address for your ministry. So you don't want to have such and such ministry at gmail.com. That is not going to serve you well at all. You need to have an actual um, email address that has the domain name of your, of your ministry. So if you were ABC ministries.com, then it should be, you know, info at or, Tony at or whatever at abcministries.com. That's the email address you need to have. All right. Uh, moving on from there, uh, you need to have good information to provide about who your audience is. Like, who is your congregation? What we tend to do, regardless of ministry or business or otherwise, is we like to think that everyone we can help is who we should be talking to. All right. Hey, I want to help anyone that needs spiritual guidance. Well, no, that's no, that's just not specific enough. It's not specific enough for you to grow your uh, congregation effectively. And it's certainly not specific enough for someone just looking around online for help that you may very well be able to to provide to know that you're talking to them or that you can help them in their specific situation. So how do you think about that? Uh, there may be, sometimes it may be location based. I'm only focused on this geography. Sometimes you could really focus on what types of problems 
you are particularly good at talking to. And one way to think about this is because we know that a ministry typically has a leader. It's normally going to be the lead pastor or something like that. Well, guess what? There's nothing wrong with reaching out and speaking to people who share a story or could relate to a story that's more similar with your background. That tends to be what happens, right? One thing I'll throw out there right now is, is that while I understand in some instances, one may think about a ministry totally different from a business or uh, any other type of institution. The fact of the matter is, is that businesses, there were ministries before there were formal businesses, <laughs> you know, and at the end of the day, yeah. any business and any of this stuff is all based on getting people to change their behavior or do some kind of thing. So that means at the end of the day, it's all rooted in communication. And if you are talking to someone, you typically are going to change the way you communicate um, based on the person you're in front of, right? And you're going to adjust your conversation mm -hmm. sometimes for their style as we strive to be very good communicators. So the deal is you need to do that through your website, but the challenge is that you can't speak to everyone differently through your website because it just gets confusing. Um, these are, you know, just computers and you're not there in person. So you have to get very specific. So um, telling your personal story and locking into your story and then connecting through the Internet, at least, right, with by mm -hmm. sharing your story first and inviting people that can relate to that story is a very good way to pare down your audience so that you're not trying to serve everyone. You're trying to serve people that connect with you, share your values, and invite them in to um, receive the help that you can provide so that you can change their life, right? So think about Great. defining your uh, customer more specifically. Okay. What else? What are the other keys? All right. The third thing, uh, you need to be clear about your website performance goals. So you've got a website. What do you want it to do for you? We've already talked about the fact that you need to grow your email list. You know, uh, you might say, well, how many more people do I want to get on my list in order to feel like this website is working well for me? There's also uh, visitation, right, in general. How many, if you have a congregation, you want to make sure that your congregation is um, able to do vital things for your church through your website, whether it be to make donations, you want them to be able to uh, participate or uh, sign up for events. You want them to be able to watch services that they haven't seen. You want them to be able to um, collect or request different tools, uh, consultations, or whatever it may be from the church through your website. So you can determine what numbers, what level of activity and engagement would give you the best prediction of how well you're growing your congregation and set those and then go for them. So that's an important thing to do as well. Have goals that you set relative to the performance you want for your congregation. Um, number four would be creative direction. Do I have time to explain a little bit more about creative okay. direction right now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Keep, keep going. Keep going. Okay. So creative direction has to do with the voice, tone, and style of your congregation. So, hey, I know you're not a business, but you are a brand just like Coca-Cola. All right. So mm -hmm. the idea is to think about what's our voice, what's the voice that we want to communicate, which has a lot to do with if my congregation, if my community, if my movement was a human being, living, breathing human being, what would person, what would its personality be like? You know, would yeah. it be high energy and uh, or would it be quiet and thoughtful? Would it be strong, passionate and bold? Things like that. Right. Um, uh, making sure that all your materials reflect the voice, tone, and style of your, of your brand, right? And then you want to make sure that, um, that your brand is differentiated as well, right? Or at least that you're clear on how it's different from others that offer the same value that you offer, right? So you can call that out, make it very much more specific. And don't forget that you do have a job to be polarizing, <laughs> right? Because I can't, if I can't tell the difference between Coke and Pepsi, well, how do I make a decision? A confused yeah. mind does not make a decision at all, right? So you need to make, be comfortable in what makes you unique and sometimes even uh, accentuate that. 
so that you can impact positively impact more people's lives. And the last part uh-huh. is make make sure <laughs> that you have all of your administrative access information in your possession. Sometimes people get websites built and they have some service providers, a web developer, and there are all these things that they actually don't have any access to. Well, you, you uh-huh. have to own your website. So if, uh-huh. if you don't know what, if you don't know what host, if you don't know what hosting is and therefore you don't have your hosting login and password, get it. If you don't know where you got your domain URL, get it. And yeah, we have to take another break. break. I'll go into more detail. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. We we have to take a break. We please stay tuned. We will be right back with more on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Introducing BetterHomeAndGarden.com. That's www.betterhomeandgarden.com with just the letter N in Better Home and Garden. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the highest quality products on the market that are environmentally safe and effective and to make them available to you at the lowest possible prices. BetterHomeAndGarden.com understands that kind of creativity and do-it-yourself attitude. Thus, we developed our website, BetterHomeAndGarden.com. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the following products right online. Bath, bedding, collectibles, craft, sewing and hobby, food and beverage, furniture, home decor, kitchen and dining, lamps and lighting, large appliances, musical instruments, outdoor cooking, patio items, pet supplies, plant and garden, rug and floor coverings, small appliances, travel and luggage, and so much more. Better Home and Garden is an online retailer offering a wide variety of high-quality brand name merchandise at discount prices. Our service is personal and we aim to please. Visit us at www.betterhomeandgarden.com. Make your home your own. Intergenerational programming is uniting America due to the tireless efforts of Dr. Ramona Frischman. Retired from the Miami-Dade County Public School System, Dr. Frischman continues to develop intergenerational learning programs aimed to improve the lives of children, young adults, and seniors through unique strategies and public policy in order to establish a mutually supportive agenda. She views intergenerational programs as a resource for policymakers and the general public on economic, social, and personal initiatives that govern our society. Her work bridges the generational gap, providing many individuals the opportunity to explore areas of common ground and celebrate each other's diversity. Contact Ramona Frischman at RamonaLong at AOL.com or visit www.gu.org to learn more about intergenerational programming. Welcome back. This is um, Flame Ministry here on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. My guest today is Tony Dix, and we've been talking about websites for congregations. And Tony, you were finishing up the fifth key of things to make sure that you get to communicate when you're doing a website. Please finish that up. And then we, you've got an offer for the people here, too. So please share that with our guests. Yes. So, um, all right. So here it is. Make sure you have your website access information. Normally that means your, wherever your domain URL lives, which is your website address, your hosting. And if you have WordPress or some other content manager, whatever that is, make sure you have your username and password for that stuff. Make sure that you have the following Google properties. You have your username and password for your website on these Google properties, your Google Analytics, your Google Search Console, your Google Tag Manager, Google My Business, and that's it. All right, and if you don't have it, you need to make sure you have those things. Lastly, make sure that you have access to your your social media uh, accounts, your username and password for those, and as long as you have those, you should be pretty good to go. I have made an, um, I've made worksheets with the information that we talked about today, and those can, uh, you can get those worksheets at succeedwithsalesfunnels.com. And those are be a free download. Those are not, yes. Go ahead. Succeed with, succeedwithsalesfunnels.com. Okay. That's where you can get those uh, resources. 
And um, those are not available to the public yet, so you guys are getting that first here. Ah, how nice. And, uh, so and succeed fact, with that sales. website build is not even complete, but I wanted to make it available <laughs> early, at least functional for you guys, because I knew I was doing this show with you, Kathleen. So I wanted to try to help your uh, listeners out that way. Well, thank you so much, Tony, for that. Succeed with salesfunnels.com to get the worksheets Tony talked about that talk about getting all of this stuff ready and everything for your website. Um, and Tony, if people want to get in touch with you, um, do you have another website for that? You know what? Actually, I'll go ahead and give a, an email address that you can email and assess okay. if there's a problem with this website performing right and you're not getting the documents. I want to know, um, and that's going to be six, that's going to be Tony at mm-hmm. Phoenix spelled F is in Frank, E is in Edward, N is in Nancy, I is in Igloo, X is in X Ray Labs dot C O. There is no M, so it's dot co. Okay, Doc. Well, for like company. So thank you, Tony, for all that you have shared with us today. And for listeners, if you've got comments about this, please go to the Bold Braid Media uh, website, A Flame Dash Ministry, and list any comments there about the show today. Uh, or come to my Facebook page, which is A Flame Ministry Consulting, and send me a message. Tell me other things that you might like to hear about. About. Um, also, you can visit my website, which, based on what we've been discussing today, needs work. So, but it is aflameministryconsulting.com, and there is a link there to get in touch with me as well. So, thank you so much, Tony, for being here. Thank you all for listening today. We will be back next week with another show. God's blessings to each and every one of you, and have a great week. This has been a Flame Ministry with your host, Pastor Kathleen Panning. Tune in each week as Kathleen guides you through the many challenges that face our faith-based communities today as she ignites the ministry of your faith community so that more people can hear the message of God's love on Kathleen Panning's A Flame Ministry. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.